his superpower is all about how the dance works outside of ourself and the communication and understanding the other. And I'm more about like, what does it all mean as we bring it back to ourself? Um, because the only thing that we can really truly change as much as we want to change our partner is ourself. So we are going to, you think it's a good to get started now, Scott? Yeah. Um, I just started recording. So yeah. Take it away, beloved. Okay, great. So I'm gonna ask everyone to um, just kind of deepen into a container together. If you can back off your computer and we're gonna just drop in and create some sacred space. I've got my Tibetan bowl here, so you may be hearing a little bit of the, the Tibetan bowl. And I just invite you to close your eyes and drop into your breath. Just feeling the gentle inhale as you inhale, expanding through your body. And on the exhale, releasing, letting go. It's the simplicity of coming home to this beautiful breath connecting us to all of life. And I invite you as you're focusing on your breath, that each inhale you're inhaling healing energy into your heart. And each exhale, you're letting go of anything that's not serving you. Stress, thoughts, Overwhelm, old energies from the day. Again, inhaling, healing energy into your heart. And exhaling, releasing anything you'd like to let go of. And just feel yourself arriving here in the moment, becoming more present with what's alive in you, in your body, in your mind, in your heart. <sighs> And I'd like to invite all of us to shift our attention to our frontal lobe consciousness. Some call it higher self, connecting to that part of us that can rise above even our body, seeing the big picture of life, the observer. the part of us that has the ability to be so in our hearts, to have deep empathy for ourself and also empathy for those around us. And that part of us that's able to drop into a deep place of trust and faith in the miracle adventure and mystery of life. Ah. Just tuning in, I'd like to ask you, what is it that you would like to get out of our time together? What are your intentions that you're putting out there? Ah, just sending those desires, those intentions, those longings out, rippling out like sine waves out into the universe, releasing them out, knowing that 
That's all you have to do is just put the desire out there and show up. Watch the miracles come back. And I call forth that we are creating a very safe and compassionate field of energy together. I want to celebrate each one of you for showing up, doing your work on yourself and the work that you are doing to evolve the planet. Thank you so much for being here, for co-creating this space with me tonight. And just recognizing that in our teachings, we're leaving the world of right and wrong, judgment, separation. We're leaving the world of good and bad. And we're coming into this beautiful world of feelings and needs, possibilities. And that we're here to learn and grow and expand into our greatness, into connection and love and compassion. Bless us as we explore the parts of ourself that might be hard to look at tonight. Our judgmental self, our controller, um, the stories that we can have about others. Recognizing that it's all here for alchemy and growth and learning. That there's no bad or wrong, but simply parts of ourself that we're learning from and growing. Just taking the next 30 seconds or so and really celebrating yourself for showing up so fully. Celebrating who you are, this ability to continue to grow and learn. And slowly when you're ready, coming back into the room. Ah. <sighs> Thank you so much for creating the sacred space with me tonight. So happy to see all your faces. Welcome, Dane, Sharon, Lusana, Matthew, Art, Chelsea, David. I'd love for anybody who feels called to just kind of put their camera on, but I do understand if you are unable to. And because we've got a few new people with us that haven't done this, I just want to go over a couple of things. Um, you can have your computer set to camera, uh, the camera to speaker view or gallery view. In the upper right hand corner is where you can choose speaker view, which means whoever's talking is who you'll see. Or you can choose gallery view, which we affectionately call the Brady Bunch look or the Hollywood Squares look, where you get to see Lusana smiling and everybody's happy face. So that's a choice that you have. There's also a chat function um, at the bottom. If you take your cursor down where it says chat, um, and lots of times there's communication going on in the chat. And you can either write to everyone or you can write to somebody privately. So if you go into the chat box, um, there's a blue button just above where you type your message. And if you want, right now the blue button is always on everyone, but you can click it and pick somebody like you want to send a private message to Chelsea or to anybody. You just pick that person and then it's a private message to them. So uh, I think those are the main things to know. And uh, I'm just really delighted to have a, all these, every one of you is special to us. So it's good to see all of you and I'm really proud of Emily. I know she's worked, she's put a lot of energy into tonight's course. So take it away, beloved. Well, first of all, I'm just really feeling super grateful that you're all here. Thank you for showing up, feeling very much in my heart tonight. Ah. <laughs> Whew. Well, tonight we're going to be looking at our projections and judgments of others and how to really look at them and see what's going on underneath and use it for a powerful tr transformation to really end the separation and fortresses, I call that we can put around our heart. Um, a little bit of my background, um, I've had a lot of judgment of others that I've worked through. Um, I grew up in a really traumatic um, home, lots of drugs, lots of chaos. Um, many of you know my background a little bit. 
and it was basically unsafe. And for me, I had to, the way I dealt with it was going into my protector and um, managing everything around me, being the rescuer, taking care of everything. And my needs really went neglected. And um, I felt, you know, really like I didn't have the emotional stability and safety that I needed growing up. And so I have this really strong part of me that I call my controller. Um, and that part of me is pretty self-righteous. You know, it's like not only um, was, you know, did I really get stuff done and go into a hyper-driven masculine role, um, but I also, a lot of people were not capable growing up. It's a lot of drug addiction and I kind of created a currency of being the rescuer in my family. So I grew up with kind of a um, I'm better than um, complex, you know, because <laughs> I was the savior and other people were incapable and I had to take care of shit. So I developed this really strong um, role of myself um, that very much can go into right wrong thinking and um, has really kind of walled me off from being able to move deeper into intimacy into my heart. And so it's really normal that we create judgments of others as a way to create separation because we feel terrified or scared or um, there's a deeper level of vulnerability that sometimes that we don't want to face because we don't want to be hurt or we're scared or we might be taken advantage of or any of our past veils of past pain might come up. Um, of, and so we create separation, we create judgment, we create projection um, to be able to keep us, you know, distant from that love or intimacy that we're really longing for underneath. So that's a little bit about me and my vulnerability and um, wanted to just create this as, a, as an opportunity for us to make it safe for us to look at our judgmental self. Um, a lot of people I work with, they judge that they're judgmental. And so I just want to say that we all have judgments. Um, judgment is a way for us to create differentiation. You know, it helps us create distance and separation. So sometimes we can understand something or feel safe or be able to um, look at something. But when we stay there and we create walls of separation and those projections, that's when it limits connection and it limits us to be able to go into deeper intimacy. Um, and so I just want to say that we are letting go of judging the judge. <laughs> and if we're going to judge the judge, that's okay. We're going to love that part of ourself too. Um, but we all have this mind and we all evaluate and diagnose and do these things. It's becoming conscious of it and becoming aware of it and having the ability to do the ninja move of going, oh, wow, what's going on with me? What is this reflecting in me? What's, what am I really feeling? What are some of the needs that are really being threatened for me right now? And how can I embrace those? And how can I be aware of how to get them met that, shoot, that, that move me toward love, right? How can I embrace my needs that move me toward love rather than create walls of separation and distance and polarity of, yeah, of what, we, what we don't want? We all really do want to love and be loved and to move deeper into intimacy. So with that said, I'm going to bring up my PowerPoint here and we're going to go through a bit of a PowerPoint and um, I'll probably be dialoguing and coming back. And um, But before we do that, I really want you to self-reflect right now on someone that you've got judgment around. You know, someone, it, it, it could be even, you know, a world figure. You, it, you could pick anybody, anybody. It doesn't have to be somebody that you actually intimately know. It could be Donald Trump. It could be someone that you have big beef around, where you notice stories of, you know, this person doesn't care. All this person thinks about is themselves. Um, this person doesn't listen to me. What are the stories of judgment that really that you run? And I'd probably pick, don't pick a bunch of different people, but pick, you know, like a focused couple big projections or stories that are pretty powerful for you that you want to examine and go deeper into looking at how we can transform those. So I'm going to give you like, you know, a couple minutes just to kind of write those down and think about it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hmm. And while you guys are doing that, I just want to vulnerably share that um, a lot of stuff came up for me last night in my partnership. And um, I had a lot of stories running. I was really going off to town and um, it's normal when we're in relationship, you know, our, our partner can make choices that don't work for us or that are challenging, challenge us. And um, it was such an opportunity for me to take, go in and do this practice that I'm about to take you guys into. So isn't it interesting how often when we're gonna teach something, like life brings us the perfect situation <laughs> to like really do the work, right? And um, so, I just want to get a, a raise of hands. Does the people to raise your hand if you feel complete, like you're really clear on some of the, the projections or judgments that you're going to be working on. Okay, I'm going to give great. I'm going to give you about one more minute or so. Here's my name. Hey, Emily. Yes. The guy, um, Al. Uh-huh. Can he turn his camera off? I feel like I'm watching a video game. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if I can do that. Let me see. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Scott. Thanks, Al. Or Scott did it. <laughs> great. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, I'm going to do a screen share here. Um, let's see. And I just want to say my expertise is not PowerPoints. So you're getting like rawness. So if you see like that things aren't balanced or whatever, I guess I'm just longing for some empathy and reassurance that like we're good. Cause like this is not my expertise in PowerPoint. So um, here we go. I again want to just reiterate some of the core foundations of our teachings in LCA. Um, which again are, we're leaving the world of right, wrong, good, bad. Um, that world does not work in intimate relationships. All it does is create suffering and pain and fighting and victim perpetrator model. And honestly, that's what we were raised in and that's what we're busting free from. Um, so, and, and instead we're really entering the world of feelings and needs. What's going on underneath my judgment? What am I feeling? What is the other person feeling? What's going on for them? We're really doing the work of embracing curiosity, slowing down and questioning our thoughts, questioning our motives, questioning what's really alive underneath the intentions and actions of ourselves and others. We're choosing love and connection over fear and separation. And that I just want to say, folks, that's a choice. That's a choice every moment. Am I going to give my power away to that gremlin that says I'm not good enough? Or am I going to find and celebrate myself for the ways that I am showing up? That's a choice. It's like we can either give our power away to thoughts that don't serve us, or we choose more empowering thoughts. And yeah, it's, it can be a bitch and it's hard, but the courage to actually transform and do the work brings us the rewards of a deeply rich, nourishing, connective life. And I think that's all we all want at the heart of it. We are, when we are triggered and judging, we self-reflect and take 100% responsibility. Oops, I missed a word there. 100% responsibility for our thoughts, feelings, and needs. So in general, we're always in this work look, taking 100% responsibility for our thoughts, feelings, and needs. But especially when we're triggered and judging is when we want to take responsibility. We're here learning lessons of love starting with ourself. That's so powerful, right? I mean, every challenge, can we see it as a blessing and an opportunity even if we don't see it in the moment? right? Because it's here forging medicine, forging 
a deeper sense of self-reflection, of awareness, of growth. And then the last one I have here is the only thing we can change is ourself, be the change. As much as we'd like to change our partner, <laughs> we don't have power. That's where we lose our power and we become codependent if we start to try to fix or consistently change or obsess about them. So we bring the energy back to ourselves and we focus on ourselves. All right, here we got the scale here. Do you ever find yourself making the other wrong? You get that initial hit of feeling empowered in the moment, but you end up feeling bitter, resentful, isolated from others, and disconnected from the people you love the most. You know, it's like when we're in that place of, I'm right, I know what you're doing, I know what's better, you know, like, I know what's going on, I know what you need to change. You know, it's like that place that feels strong in the moment and powerful, but really it's promoting disconnection and disharmony and walling us off from being able to move deeper into connection and understanding. What does judgment give us and what are some of the stories that it perpetrates? What happens physio physiologically? We get a cocktail of dopamine, which is the reward chemical in the brain, serotonin, that feel-good chemi chemical, and that adrenaline, I've had time to pump it up, which gives us a rush of feeling empowered. So when we're in that place of judging that other and we're going into that righteous space, that's what's going on physiologically. And it actually feels good in the moment. And so that's why it can be very elusive when we're in judgment and we think that we're actually kind of empowered, but I call it a pseudo empowerment. It's like, it's, it's like that, that moment where it's like giving you that rush of I'm better than, but it's really disconnecting you from the deeper vulnerability of what's going on with yourself, but also um, from the other. It's kind of putting us into a protective walled off place. Some of the stories that happen and that are good to notice um, when we're in judgment. And as we're looking at these stories, I, I invite you to relate to relate and self reflect where, where do I run that? Or where are some of the do I relate to this story when I'm in that place where I'm running those judgments that I have picked? I'm right, therefore I'm entitled to fill in the blank. Tell you what to do, tell you what you did wrong. <laughs> I am justified. I feel dignified. I am dignified. I'm better than. That's kind of when we're in the right wrong paradigm. We're really in these places of like, I'm really, it's I'm better than. Um, a little deeper, usually under those stories, is you hurt me, which makes you blank and gives me the right to blank. So that's kind of what we do, like when we're playing victim, you know, like you hurt me, which makes you a bad person, or which makes you disrespect me, or which makes you, you know, that you don't care about me. So now I'm going to pull away my love. Another story, I know what you need to do differently or change, some rendition on that, um, focusing on what the other's not doing right. And so we dissipate our energy into wanting to fix them or change them um, because again, we know what they need to do better. We're better than, <laughs> we're righteous. <laughs> um, another story, some kind of rendition, if you just did blank, then everything would be blank. You know, if you um, just, if you just listen to me more, then you would be a better lover or you'd be a better partner. And deeper, on the deeper level of usually underneath all these stories is, I need to protect myself right now because I'm not feeling safe. That's like the deeper story that a lot of people can't access, but usually what's underneath all that righteousness is, is you're, you're scared. There's fear running. And so if you're able to access more of those deeper layers there, I just wanna celebrate you, you know? And it's okay, you know, because I can access all these stories in me. 
Um, and so, again, we're just like moving through the layers of like, okay, where, you know, where do I go when I start really in that, when I'm in that place of separation? What, what's, what's going on with me? We talk a lot about in our work cover feelings. And so those are the surface feelings that we can find when we're usually in, in, in an experience. And specifically when we're in judgment, we usually can identify with these feelings, prideful, empowered, dignified, strong, angry, frustrated, irritated, repulsed, disgusted, hurt, guarded, untrusting. So usually when we're in that place of I'm right, I'm wrong, you're, I'm right, you're wrong, we usually can kind of identify with these as the surface emotions. I see you looking, Scott, did you want to come in? I, I Definitely know, know me quite well. Yeah, you know, I um, was putting into the chat box a couple words that I would add that I think are also common cover feelings, certainly for me when I'm running judgment, uh, is overwhelm, feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, I think is a, is a common one that I, when I thought about when I'm running judgment, you know, uh, and self-righteous. Um, yeah, know, that's which, not a feeling though, that's an evaluation, right? Mm, true. So that's why I put prideful, empowered, dignified. Right, 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 right. Um, great list. Great. By the way, you rocking it, baby. You're rocking it. <laughs> Thanks, sweetie. So just, just again, start to write down like some of these feelings. Like when you're in your, when you read your stories, like you know, what are the feelings that you can really relate to? Because a lot of times, what happens is like when we're coaching people and they're in a lot of right wrong they usually can access these feelings um, and, on the surface. But we're gonna go a little bit deeper, like undercover emotions are some of the emotions that might, we might be more disconnected to or we may have disowned. You know, a lot of us have um, stories that it's not okay to be scared or not, it's not okay to be vulnerable or we're just, we're, we don't have access to that level of emotional literacy. Um, we're not taught how to actually be in touch with our emotions. So I have a lot of empathy for um, what we're relearning, you know? Um, so this is like a whole new language that I just wanna invite us all into. Boom, so what's really going on under your judgment of others? I really like this quote, it says, when it comes to our mistakes, we're very good lawyers. When it comes to others' mistakes, we are very good judges. <laughs> Isn't that a great quote? I just really love that so much. It just makes me giggle. So what's really underneath your judgment is your disowned vulnerability. And so much of what actually creates the intimacy we want is to be able to openly share our fear, our shame, our loneliness, all these aspects of ourselves that we're like, oh boy, I'm not going there. No way. I'm just, it's so much easier to stay repulsed than to go, you know what, I, there's, I'm really feeling like I'm not good enough. You know, it's so much easier to create a story about someone and create an enemy image rather than go, you know what, I'm, I'm really scared right now. I'm scared of what that person's bringing up for me. And so again, the deeper layers of underneath your judgment are, you know, your, your deeper layers of emotions that are challenging to feel, your shame, your fear, your pain, your insecurity, your loneliness, your beliefs about the other, yourself or the world, which may or may not be true. Remember everything, um, that is a story is, it may or may not be true, it's a projection. And so we have to ask ourselves the stories that we're telling ourselves, are they causing hurt and harm? Or are they causing us to be connected and enjoy and love? And so when we really look deeper under our judgment, we start to look at, oh wow, is that reflecting a deeper judgment in myself? Is that reflecting a deeper belief system I have about you know, that the world is messed up 
and I have to protect myself? What's the deeper layers that we can actually sink into that want to be acknowledged that help us get back into our heart? So all of this is challenging as it is to face. It's what breeds intimacy and it what's, it's what gets us back to our heart. And I think that's what we all want is we want to be able to be in, in our heart. And I love this quote. It's um, Pope John Paul. I just pulled it off. It says, the worst prison would be a closed heart. And judgment is, judgment is, what, the, judgment is what creates a closed heart. It really does. It's what walls us off and isolates us from connection. It's really, really sad. And I'm so glad we're doing this work. We're amazing. We're ninjas. It's easier to make the other wrong than to feel your deeper feelings. It's harder to face our pain. So we create strategies to avoid it. How perfectly human, right? All the things that we do to not face our pain. Drugs, Facebook, blame, shame, changing the other, <laughs> avoiding, <laughs> avoiding our feelings. So judgment of others is really a coping strategy that we develop to avoid ourself and avoid our own pain. So what part of myself have I rejected, made wrong, or disowned? And that's a great question to ask yourself when you're in judgment. What, if I, what part of myself have I rejected, made wrong, or disowned? And what do I need to be willing to face and feel my own pain? And so those are just some great questions to kind of self-reflect on. Moving right along here. So underneath our all judgment are our precious needs and values. And I really went through, since I run a lot of judgment, I got really clear about what are the main values on that whole big ass list that we have. And I think I've knocked it down to what I can find really is the, at the heart of the matter under judgment. And so these are the needs that often is, or the values that are underneath our judgment. And it helps us to understand like what's going on with us, what's driving that desire to create that story. Because this is where we have our power is when we reconnect to our needs. And so as we're looking at these needs I've written down here, I ask you to look at some of those stories that you had and to really ask yourself, okay, wow, what, What's really underneath this judgment? What are the needs and values that are either feeling threatened or that I'm really longing for? So for people on the um, phone that don't have the PowerPoint, I have safety and protection. Being valued or being seen. Right? Like we want to make a point. We want our point to be across. We want to be validated for that we know better or that our point of view is respected. Self-esteem, mattering to myself. You know, again, it's like when we want to really make our point or it can definitely be a way to bolster our self-esteem. Dignity. That's a big one on the needs list I haven't really been looking at, but that's, it feels like it goes along with respect. You know, it's like pride, respect, power. Definitely autonomy, freedom, and independence. Um, really wanting our point of view or our world to be validated or our opinion to matter, <laughs> or our thoughts, or our, our, the way that we see the world, you know, is to be validated. Acknowledgement, that's a big one. Understanding or being understood. Contribution. You know, we talk a lot about an LCA that often when we're in right, wrong, it's actually our desire to contribute to the well-being of someone else. Even if it's critical, it's like we're wanting to help the other person. And so 
even though we're in judgment, how can we see that there's actually care or the desire to contribute in some way? Also space, self-care and safety. So boundaries are usually a way to create space, self-care and safety. And oftentimes when we're in judgment, we're trying to create or maybe assert a boundary. Um, so we're creating distance, we're creating separation. Um, and so that's a strategy to be able to kind of sometimes meet our need for boundaries in a not so conscious way usually unless we make it conscious. And I have down here, the needs are always precious. Again, the strategies are what we need to question. Are the strategies that we're choosing, are they promoting love and connection or fear and separation? So if I'm in right, wrong paradigm and I'm recognizing that I'm choosing to be in judgment you know, because I'm really needing to meet, need, meet my need for safety. What are ways that I can harness my safety without causing separation? You know, do I, do I need to let this person know I'm feeling scared and I have to make a boundary? Do I find that safety inside myself and still try to choose connection in ways that feel nourishing to my heart? So again, we always wanna question the strategy. The need is always precious. So I really wanna anchor that in, like that's super potent right there. So there's needs and then there's strategies to meet needs. And the strategies are where we wanna question and be able to shift so that they're either choosing love and connection or again, are they choosing fear and separation? So again, I just ask that you, again, look at that list and really self-reflect when oh, under those stories, what's really, what, you know, what are some of the core values that I could really relate to? So what do you need to transform your judgment? Self-awareness, right? When self-awareness, what's going on with me? Am I even noticing that I'm judging? <laughs> Willingness. Willingness to self-reflect, self-reflection, such a powerful tool. Self-responsibility and ownership, right? Like the ability to go, wow, I am judging. What's going on? How can I be more self-responsible with what's really going on underneath that for me? That's like the empowerment piece. Curiosity, right? What's going on with me? Why am I thinking this way? What am I feeling? What am I needing? Why am I choosing to create this story about this person? Empathy, understanding, and compassion for yourself and others. These are all ninja superpowers that we need to cultivate to be able to go deeper into looking at transforming our judgment. So as I'm going over these, again, what really feels like sticks out for you that you could really welcome into your life more? Like where is your edge of where you need to be able to kind of like stretch your edges to bring more of this medicine into your life? And so I really, and just really tune in to the word. So courage, I'm really needing courage to face myself, my pain and my vulnerability. Like that's, that's, something, that's, a, that's something to choose. Wow, this is scary. It's so much easier to, to choose separation and judgment and stay in projection. It's harder to face our pain. And usually to do that, we need courage. Reassurance. Reassurance that you know what, I'm not a bad person for judging. Reassurance that I am safe, I'm lovable, I'm loved. Reassurance that, you know what, I'm consciously choosing love. The power of love is who I am. Whatever the reassurance that you need, you know, as you start to explore more of, you know, diving deeper into your shadow, essentially. 
and I wrote this down, it says, because vulnerability, as scary as it is, it's, is your best chance of getting your needs met. Because vulnerability is all about opening the heart. All right, I want to acknowledge Rachel Maddox, um, some of the, what we're going into, the uh, tools that we're going to be using are some things that she developed and I riffed off of her. And she's a trauma specialist, a coach and a guide and she lives down in San Diego. She's awesome. She came to our workshop recently and I really respect her. And you can, if you like a little bit of this work, you can check her work out at rachelmaddox.com. I have a really high value for acknowledging um, other inspirational figures where I might be using a little bit of their tools and maybe morphing off of them. And I always like to give them a shout out so that they feel respected and honored. So thank you, Rachel. Okay, so we're gonna basically now go into some pretty deep self-reflections. I'd love you to get your pens out. And we're gonna be looking at breaking down the judgments um, that you had earlier. And you probably want to pick the deepest, juiciest one that feels like, oh, wow, that's really big for me. Um, because it's probably good to kind of break, the, break them down one at a time. Um, and we're going to be going, um, going through this little thing. And I feel a little like if, I, if people aren't on their phone, hopefully they can read this. Um, maybe what I'll do is, should I put it in the chat box, Scott? Like copy it and put it in the chat box? Or I'm just thinking for people that might not be on a screen share. You're unmuted. You need to unmute. Um, I could even email it. Uh, I could maybe copy it and email it to people that are using their phones. I guess anybody who's using their phone and has trouble reading it, send me a message in the chat box, a, a, a private message in the chat box, and we'll figure out a way to get it to you. Because I, I could copy it and send it in the chat box right now, Because, but I'd have to come off screen share. So why don't I do that? Yeah, yeah why, don't, why don't you do that then? Okay. Because um, I'm, I'm really longing for everyone to feel like they're kind of on board with us. So uh, yeah. I want to welcome some of the people that have joined us. Uh, since you started, welcome Jamie. Okay. Rachel Maddox is an interior decorator. Check oh. the spelling, check the spelling. She spells oh, it. Sorry, there's you. an A, there's an A, so I need to redo that. So there's an A in her name, R-A-C-H-A-E-L. Thank you for that, Lori. Can you um, put that, can you put that um, back up in the um, chat box? Thank you, she's on it. Of course, Lori Masters calling me on my stuff here. Finding all the little details. Please don't make me wrong for the spelling punctuations. Um, Emily, you, you sent it to me privately in the chat box. You need to change your yeah. setting to everyone. Okay. Thank you everyone for your patience here. Okay. All right, going back. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to give everyone probably about, what would you say, Scott, maybe six minutes? I'll check back in about six minutes. To go through this? Yeah. And um, if anybody needs support, they can, you know, write to us in the chat box and we can go in and uh, chat with them that way. <clears throat> um, Are you going to do it, Scott? Um, I'm actually sending it to somebody right now, and then I'm going to do it.
On mute. I can't. I can't read. People can't read the, what's at the very bottom. The very bottom. Yeah. Um. So you're gonna make it a little bit smaller. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or, or or scroll it up because by now people have gotten okay. into it. So I would scroll it up. You're doing great. Okay. You're doing great, baby. Really proud of you. Sorry, I'm not on the chat box. I guess that would be good for me to.
I just wanted to come back here and kind of see where people are at. Um, would, if people feel complete, um, just go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, looks pretty good. I can't see the people that are not on. So um, I guess we'll kind of move forward. Does anybody feel like they want to see the needs list? Would that be of benefit to put that up if you'd like to see the needs list? All right, I'm just going to go ahead and screen share that. Um, hang on, let me bring it up first. Can everybody see that? Cool. And the ones in black and big are like main categories and then the smaller ones are like little subcategories. And then in the box to the left, of course, are the pr primary needs, connection, safety, respect, appreciation, to be seen clearly, to be understood. I should update that to be seen clearly. Scott, I got to put that on the list on my PowerPoint. <laughs> Boobly. All right, I'm going to bring that down. Hopefully that was enough. Does that feel like good, Scott? Good amount of time? Okay, cool. Meaning reassurance. It's hard when I can't see anybody else. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for everybody's willingness to kind of go deeper into this level of self-reflection. And I would love for us to do a breakout group where we're going to go into dyads, where I kind of put you guys into your own rooms to be able to share. Um, but I'd love to open it up to the group and anybody that's feeling courageous to be able to share any ahas or breakthroughs, awakenings, David. Hello, everyone. Um, I love and hate this exercise at the same time. I just want to <laughs> throw that out there. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, so... This, for me, it's about my brother. Uh, my brother's nine years older than me, and he's just been like that mentor asshole my entire life. <laughs> and so um, I went, to, do you want me to go through the questions and just spill it out? Yeah, I mean, if you feel, or, or if you feel like it would be beneficial to share that or anything, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a gamer. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, I have projected uh, judgment that Mike is my measuring stick. Um, that projection believes uh, benefits me because I don't have to monitor myself. Um, but in the end, it actually results in sadness. I'm afraid of disconnection with Mike. In order to protect myself, from myself, 
I've bought into the belief that I'm unlovable. Mm. This belief benefits me by giving me uh, the victim mentality and also renders me powerless. Mm -hmm. um, some of my unmet needs are understanding, compassion, acceptance, and connection. Mm -hmm. Some of my life affirming strategies are communicate, uh, being vulnerable, and to self-source. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. thank you so much, David. That was profoundly vulnerable and amazing. You know, it's like that you were able to really be able to tap into that belief of being unlovable, you know, the measuring stick that comparing maybe or not not being able to measure up and that inadequacy, you know, that shame that can get ignited. And I just want to say thank you for being willing to face that and to own that. And I, I could feel you almost start, you know, trying to, you know, starting to choke up feeling into that sadness, I, I bet. Yeah, that's tough. It's, it's tough. That's, that's a tough connection for me. Yeah. How does it feel for you as you think about the possibility of, of communicating with him? Does that scare you? Yes. Mm. Yeah, the judgment, the, um, you know, the belittlement, you know, those types of things. Mm. There's, there's no real communicating with him is, you know, um, there's just always judgment. Um, so, um, you know, just it is what it is. Mm. So I work on me. Thank you for doing your work. Mm. And maybe we can talk in a session a little bit more about your brother and how to kind of create some more harmony and connection there. I'd love to support you in that way. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Do you think we should do one more, Scott, or should we just go ahead and go into breakouts? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just feel so grateful. Like, I, I have to say, the idea of you guys all going into breakouts and I'm not hearing anything would be sad for me. So, I would love to. Wells Fargo mobile oh, app, you can request a one time access code to use the. Sorry, my phone just started talking in a weird way. Um, <laughs> anybody else like to share? It's feeling courageously, powerfully vulnerable that wants to be seen. And Matthew. I saw you like, yes, no, <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> Hang on, let me unmute you, brother. Uh, you know me. I'm, I'm pretty much always uh, willing. I just, I want to give space, you know. I, I do so much of this on my own all the time that, yeah. Um, but I did dig something up that, you know, I don't touch into very often. And, um, honestly can bring me actually to a, a place of anger that I almost rarely tap into. Mm. And that is um, my perception. I always want to speak for myself, but my perception of self-righteous um, attitudes from others. And you know, I have had I have had people that I've run across where my my immediate judgment was, "You're judging me." Like immediately, my my trigger right away is they're judging me. It's immediate story that I'm being judged, and that they are somehow better than me, or they're that's what they're throwing out. Yeah. And I I can just trigger like that on it, and I can just depending on the energy and how it's coming, I can just go right directly to like my own level of self-righteous anger. <laughs> <laughs> divine, divine mirror, right? Right, exactly. So that, that's what I wrote. I'm like, you know, I wrote self-righteous energy. You know, I feel judged. My inner critic can relate with that energy from them. And it, it, it immediately comes up. And I roll into my own self-righteous um, place of judgment. And um, it is that divine mirror. It's, it's, it's showing me the areas where I have that still in me. Mm -hmm. And that is part of my humanity. Um, and what I wrote, I'll, I'll pitch that real quick. 
um, was I have projected the judgment that so-and-so is self-righteous. I don't even have a particular person because this can happen with anybody. Mm -hmm. um, the projection benefits me because then I don't have to own my own judgment of myself. I can project it outward because the moment I see it, I, I can't deal with it. So it's bleh, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, it actually results in me feeling anger, disgust, and prideful. Um, I don't create a big story around this much, so I'm going to skip a couple things just because I didn't really, it didn't really um, resonate. But what I do know is that the needs and values I'm longing for at that point are connection, care, to be seen and heard clearly, and to be understood. Mm. And that some of the life affirming strategies to get my needs met um, are really to continue to treat myself with love and care and to respect myself for showing up in authenticity and recognizing that the actions of the other that are triggering me, when that occurs, to know the triggers intimately. So that is really where my work is at. It's about, I want to know my triggers so well to love them as part of my present existence and to turn towards the other with curiosity, staying in connection and imagining what they may be experiencing. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. And I like to do that all in about the span of about 10 seconds. <laughs> right? Yeah. Ninja power skill, like turn it on like that. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I, I really, really want to celebrate that you said curiosity because so often when we have the perception of someone that may be judging us, we can then personalize that. Mm -hmm. And then so we're not able to really see what really might be going on clearly because then, you know, it's just like a judgment project. We're just defending, kind of defending ourselves. Right. And so like that power of like vulnerability, you know, like, wow, I'm feeling this way. I'd really love to get curious about what you meant by that or what are your intentions by saying that. Mm -hmm. um, and so then it's just like really puts it back on the person for them to get curious, you know, to really question what's going on with them um, and to sure. kind of dissipate through your vulnerability. And so I was just thinking that I'm so glad you said that because that's such a ninja tool. Mm. Yeah, thank you. And I, and I will also, um, you know, I'd just love to add to that, that um, when, when I choose that curiosity, I'm actually choosing it for both of us. Nice. Uh, because it is a mirror, that, that choice right there benefits a win-win. Because if I'm choosing curiosity, I'm choosing to neutralize at that point and, and just own, own my stuff, show up then then that opportunity is for me also to see where they're at and how that may be resonant with my own level of self-righteousness how that may be something that i could look at for myself you know like just understanding another human and where they're at that there could be pretty deep you know synchro synchronous you know experiences happening and i think that's beneficial to both parties i love you, know? you. you're such a ninja <laughs> Thank you so much for your mastery. Um, it appears that Larry and Christina, that you shared your screen. And so now we're seeing your screen. So um, I'm wondering if Christina and Larry, you might be able to go. Okay, great. To the stop screen here. Um, Laura, I'm unmuting you. Okay. Hi. Um, I just have, I, I know, you know, you know me, I always want examples. So I just want an example of like, I'm going to judge you, Emily. And you do your ninja move. <laughs> so I'm, I could say, um, I'm really, you know, I'm really feeling confused by what you said right there. Mm. And I'm really wanting to know um, what, what do you mean by that or what's going on for you? I'd love to know, you know, what you're, what you're feeling or what, you know, just getting curious. I probably would slow down and just say like one of those questions and see what happens. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll give you an example too. Okay. When, when I'm being judged, um, I try, I try, hopefully, I don't always do this, but when I'm at my better self, I get vulnerable and I acknowledge that I'm hearing that as judgment and it hurts because I really respect your opinion. 
to be like, wow, Laura, you know, I'm hearing that as judgment and I respect you and I want you to like me. And so when I hear the judgment, it kind of freaks me out, you know, and that that's my way of being vulnerable and real. And it's obviously a pretty good invitation for creating connection. Um, that's actually really vulnerable, Scott. I do want to say too, because I value your opinion and I want to be respected or liked by you. Yeah. I think so many people have judgment that somehow that would be wanting someone's approval. And so then they make that wrong. Right. But let's right. face it. We, like I shouldn't care what people think about me. So right. I, I should be more spiritual than that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but the truth is most of us do want to be liked. We do want to be respected. Um, and what other people think about us does matter, does matter. Even though we know spiritually we're supposed to learn not to care or, you know, but it's, it's, we, we all have an ego, you know, we all have an ego. And Thank you we're so different. much, you guys. Like, I just love these ex practical examples because then it really helps me to, like, put it into a real situation, you know. Or if I'm doing it myself, like Matthew says, you know, how, what's that quick ninja move? And so I, what I heard was con say I'm confused and then to say, and I really value your opinion and I want you to like me, so I'm feeling a judgment here, you know, can we work through this on some level? Yeah. Yeah. And, and what usually what I say is when I heard that I'm perceiving that you might be judging me mm -hmm. okay. because it's really good to say, you know, to not go, you know, you're judging me because then it's blame. Right. And I'm hearing it as judgment. The other person's going to shut down. So I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little scared or I'm feeling vulnerable. Or I'm noticing my body contract and I want to move into connection with you. And when I heard that, I'm really was hearing that you're judging me. And I don't know if that's accurate, but I'd love to, I'd love to hear more. What did you mean by that? Or what are your intentions? That is such an awesome ninja movement. And just the whole body thing, like what I think it kind of like it, when you call it a body sensation from what I'm learning, it just totally levels the playing field and it gets people connected. Like right. I'm feeling like a tightness in my stomach. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm, I'm noticing my body's contracting and I want to, I want to lean into connection with you. I want to really want to, cause you're, you're important. You matter mm -hmm. or this connection matters to me. So then if you, it's a reassurance ninja move. Right, because then the other person feels validated, even though in the moment you're thinking, "You asshole, you're judging me." Mm. <laughs> that's sure. the thing. It's like you got to put you yeah, back on the back burner and be the bigger person that's willing to choose love. So saying, you know, I'm feeling like attacking you probably wouldn't be a good idea. To right. Say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's okay. Exactly. It's uh, and mm. and to be able to do that takes a level of self sourcing. Ooh. So that's, that's a lot of the tools that we teach, which is how do I give myself that immediate injection of, you know, um, of really, I'm scared. I need to feel my feet. I need to love my inner child right now. My inner child's hurting. My inner child wants to act out and blame you. Mm -hmm. Like really acknowledging, you know, what's going on inside. And sometimes we got to develop that muscle a bit before we can get good in the moment at being ninjas like this. Right. And so that's why it's good for us to start building that muscle of self-sourcing mm -hmm. so that in the face of when we, a lot of judgment is coming at us, we're not personalizing it, mm -hmm. but we're able to have that distinction and emotional boundaries and go, oh, wow. Okay, I can take care of me and also pivot into, you know, getting curious about this person's world mm -hmm. or, you know, entering their world. Breakout groups. Um, I've got most of the breakout groups. I've got um, two people in the rooms, but in some I've got three, especially um, some of the people who I don't know if they're still on their phone or they're still with us. Um, if any of you, in a moment I'm going to open the rooms, it's important for you to click join the room. Um, I've kept the couples together. So in other words, Laura and David, I've got you just with each other. Alyssa and Ray, same thing. Um, Larry and Christina. If any of you find that you're alone or you're wanting to be moved into a, a, a larger room, um, or if any of the couples want to work with, with somebody, I'm going to come in and work with Alyssa and Ray just to say hello. Um, Emily, I've got you uh, uh, going into a room uh, with a couple people, if that's okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's uh, time-wise. 
I'm recognizing our, our course class ends at nine. Um, I, I don't want to keep you guys too much after because I want to honor the agreement. I'd like to, for us to do 10 minute breakout, but then for us to hopefully come back together and for you guys to give me, you know, five or six minutes just to wrap up the group. Um, so we will be going five or six minutes later. Um, so I'm hoping that 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 can work for everyone. Um, I recognize that 10 minutes might not be quite enough for um, a full like experience of everyone to share. So I invite you guys to kind of figure out how you can create some mutuality within the group. Um, so people are feeling really honored and really heard or that, you know, that they're getting witnessed or they're feeling like they're sharing something. Um, we don't have like a little finger. And so you do need to keep track of your own time within the group. So we're going to end the breakout group in 10 minutes from now. So if you can just kind of keep an eye on the time as far as sharing the time fully. Okay. So I think we're going to break out and we'll yeah. see you in 20 minutes. Uh, and remember, you got to click, um, please join room. Um, and Lusana, you got to click somewhere. It's giving you a, a thing to join the room and you got to do that. There we go. Oh. Hmm. Um, Kate, are you, are you still there? Dane, Art, are any of you still there? Hey, Scott, we need to bail out. We are overwhelmed and um, wish you well. Okay, thanks for joining us. God's blessings. Bye. Uh, Kate and Dane, I'm uh, guessing that you two are, have, uh, are not with us anymore. Is that accurate? Hello, Ray. Hi, Scott. I just want to go get the charging cord. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm gonna... Just celebrating that as you're doing this work, you are transforming the world. You're making the world a better place by doing this amazing work on yourself. Thank you so much. I'm deeply just cheerleading you on, each one of you. I have such a precious place in my heart. And with that said, we're going to end with three ohms. Let's go ahead and take a deep breath in together first and just exhale, deep breath in. And release, letting go. Oh. We're going to do three ohms just to solidify and anchor in what we've want to celebrate ourselves, what we've learned tonight. So let's go ahead and inhale. Oh. Inhale. Have a beautiful night. Thank you, beloved Emily. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. See you later. Have a good night. Sleep tight.